how they tell you not to bottle things up? Well, sometimes when you do, it turns out awesome. Everybody stay within each other's eyelines, please. One of you's a monster. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 bottle episodes. How are you doing? Well, this morning I woke up with a guy in my bed that I'll probably never see again, and I just watched one of my best friends die right in front of me, so I guess not that great. A bottle episode refers to an episode of a show that is confined to as few existing sets as possible and which uses as few extras as possible in its storyline. This is mainly done to produce an episode on the cheap, so the money can go towards more expensive episodes down the road, or to force writers to get creative. For this list, we've excluded cartoons and shows like Cheers that are almost always limited to one or a few sets. How did you know? Bartender's intuition. <laughs> what a shame such an astute observer of human nature is stuck behind a bar. That's what I think. Number 10. Older and far away, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Yeah, eyes on the bottle. Joss Whedon also used the bottle episode format to tell the story in the Angel episode Spin the Bottle. But his most successful use of this device was probably the season 6 edition of Buffy, which sees Buffy's sister Dawn wish never to be abandoned again. Wish granted. Resulting in everyone's favorite vampire slayer and her friends being cursed to remain in her house. I think it's time for you to go. Yeah, well, can. They like. Okay, I'll go. I'll get the door. Fine. Fine. I'm actually trying to move right now. Me too. Well, this can't be good. Trapped together in close quarters on Buffy's birthday, emotions run high as issues between the group bubble to the surface in a high comedy, high drama episode. Don, if you want us to spend time with I you... I don't. Get out. Get out, get out, get out! Number nine, duet, Star Trek Deep Space Nine. Kira to Odo. Go ahead. I'm in the infirmary. I need security here on the double. I'm on my way, Major. Star Trek's tradition of saving money on effects with bottle episodes began with original series episodes like Balance of Terror and The Tholian Web, which occur entirely on the Enterprise. If we are not extremely careful, we shall lose the captain and become trapped ourselves. Deep Space Nine continued the trend with its successful season one outing, Duet. What's the matter, Major? Your patient is a criminal. Taking place almost exclusively in a holding cell, the storyline sees Major Kira lock horns with a Cardassian who may or may not have helped massacre her people. You'll pay for that death and all the others you're responsible for. Well, I don't think I could pay for all of them, Major. There were so many. And you can only execute me once. In a clear allegory of the Holocaust, this bottle episode allows the tension to build without distraction ensuring one of the franchise's finest moments. Why are you doing this? Look, Cardassia! Cardassia will only survive if it stands in front of Bajor and admits the truth. My trial will force Cardassia to acknowledge its guilt. And we're guilty, all of us. But that is necessary. Number eight, Ice, the X-Files. We were told we'd have three clear days of weather. Over. Welcome to the top of the world, sir. Over. This episode sees Mulder and Scully investigating a strange mass murder-suicide at a remote Alaska station, alongside a team of three scientists. From the autopsies, it's clear these men killed one another. There are contusions around the throat areas of three men, evidence of strangulation. Richard and Campbell killed themselves. Even in season one, the X-Files team was willing to push the envelope by stranding its protagonists until they can find out more about the mysterious illness that overtook the crew. And it's not easy. Mulder! Golly, get that gun off me! Mulder, you have to understand! Put it down! You put it down first! Golly! Despite the fact that they're in a confined space for most of the episode, and it was planned to save the show money, Ice ran over budget. Before anyone passes judgment, may I remind you, we are in the Arctic. We think it was worth the money. It's all right. Uh, it's all over. Uh, it all stops right here. Right now. Number seven, 17 people, the West Wing. Now it starts. Working within strict budgetary confines, Aaron Sorkin produces one of his finest West Wing episodes. Taking advantage of the show's expansive set, much of the action takes place in the Oval Office itself when staffer Toby Ziegler confronts President Bartlett about his hidden multiple sclerosis diagnosis. What does relapsing remitting mean? I'm sorry? What does relapsing remitting mean? It's, I don't know, it's the good kind of MS. 
It's the good kind. Yeah, as opposed to secondary progressive, which is the bad kind. Yeah. And emotions run high. Are you pissed because I didn't say anything, or are you pissed because there were 15 people who knew before you did? In high contrast to the seriousness of that storyline, the rest of the team is holed up in a conference room trying to make the president's upcoming speech for the correspondence dinner funnier. All right, so uh, we're gonna be fine here. Yeah, we're doing great. We're doing great, everybody, right? Sam, we've got one here, but it involves a John Wayne impersonation and a sock puppet. Yeah, we're eating it. Now prepare yourselves for an audio journey into the white hot center of adrenaline. Number six. Bam. The limo. How I Met Your Mother. It's working. I'm definitely getting psyched. Oh God. I'm reaching dangerous levels of psychic hospital robot. <laughs> The gimmick of this season one episode sees the main characters party hopping on New Year's Eve, trying to find the best possible celebration to attend. But their attempts to find the perfect party are constantly hampered by something. Sore feet. Okay, Ted, but these dogs are really barking. Canceled dates. Hey, Robin. Ted, Derek stood me up. Flat tires. We need to get back on schedule. Ah, uh, nuts. Nice and guys who look like Moby. Hello. And yes, almost all of the action takes place exclusively in the backseat of the limo. Look at us, riding around in a limo, eating hot dogs. It's like we're the president. With the exception of a few crucial street scenes. Oh, well, deal is a deal. Mm -hmm. Number five, the conversation, Mad About You. Well, this is it. This is it. Really? Honey, Mabel has to learn to go to sleep on her own without us there rocking her and holding her and stuff. Originally aired with no commercial breaks, this season six episode is one uninterrupted shot of the series' leads waiting outside their bedroom door for their newborn to stop crying. I mean, to me, I think we should be sending her the exact opposite message, which is that if something goes wrong, she can come to us. The camera remains stationary while Paul and Jamie discuss the moral implications of what they're doing to their baby, as well as whatever else randomly crosses their minds. I want 500 pounds of rigatoni today. Obviously, anything can go wrong in that scenario, but Paul Reiser and Helen Hunt rise to the occasion. What is your gut telling you to do right now? It's telling me to go in there and pick her up and hold her right now before we hurt her any more than we already have. Thank you. They also can't resist congratulating themselves on their hard work. You know, but do you realize this is all one shot? What? This, is, well, this whole scene is one shot. The camera hasn't moved in like 20 minutes. So? So that's fantastic. What's the big deal? <laughs> one shot for 20 minutes? Do you, do you know what that involves? Oh, God, look, she's crying. Sweetie, a, a 20 minute shot means that there's no margin for error. One, one little mistake and they, they got to start all over. Why would they make a mistake? Number four, the one where no one's ready, friends. Why aren't you guys dressed? We have a half hour. No, four minutes ago you had a half hour. We have to be out the door at 20 to eight. Since Friends was built around the chemistry of its ensemble cast, bottle episodes were key. Never did they do it better than in this season three episode, where everyone is slowly getting ready for Ross's museum benefit at Monica and Rachel's apartment. Every character gets his or her own moment to shine, with acting and dialogue taking center stage. Oh, not touching, can't get mad. Not touching, can't get mad. Not touching, can't get mad. There's Phoebe's ruined dress. Oh my God, you rotten boys! Monica's unfortunate voicemail. Maybe I'm getting my period or something, I don't no! know. Rachel's hissy fit. How, how, um, how can you not be going? I'm not gonna go. So I think that will accomplish the not going. And Joey and Chandler's nonsensical fight rounding out the silliness. Look at me! I'm Chandler! Could I be wearing any more clothes? <laughs> and Ross's whining tying everything together. What can I do to show you how, how, much, how much I want you to be there? You could drink the fat. All right, welcome to an adult conversation. <laughs> no, 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 wait, no, wait, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. That actually, uh, that sounds interesting. What? I think you should drink the fat. Yay! Number three, cooperative calligraphy, community. Are we going to the puppy parade or not? Because this is starting to feel like a bottle episode. Self-referential as always, the community crew isn't afraid of a challenging storytelling device like the bottle episode. In fact, 
The show comes back to the format often in successful outings like remedial chaos theory and cooperative polygraphy. What up, N-bombs? How's the funeral? Awesome. No, Chang, our friend's funeral was not awesome. However, the bottle episode considered one of the series' best is cooperative calligraphy. Maybe nobody took it. Sometimes I think I lost something really important to me and it turns out I already ate it. I didn't eat my pen, Troy. Wherein the group locks themselves down in the study room until Annie finds her pen. Lockdown! I'll bet. Seal the doors. Nobody leaves until this pen shows up. I don't like this. Yeah, tell it to the pen you might have. Guinevere. Hi. Yeah, it's me. I can't make it. Well, tell your disappointment to suck it. I'm doing a bottle episode. Full of references to the bottled format and pulling out all the cliches, this is meta comedy at its best. What the hell did you people do in there? Something you and your puppies could only dream of, you non miraculous son of a bitch. Non miraculous? Number two, the Chinese restaurant, Seinfeld. How many? All right, uh, four. <laughs> Seinfeld. Four. Oh, be five, ten minutes. TV studios were once wary of bottle episodes, but when Seinfeld co creator Larry David threatened to quit if they didn't run this season two episode, they quickly changed their tune. You know, we're living in a society! <laughs> we're supposed to act in a civilized way! In this groundbreaking bottle episode, Jerry, George, and Elaine are on their way to a movie. This isn't plans one through eight from outer space, this is plan nine. <laughs> this is the one that worked. The worst movie ever made! But first, they decide to grab some Chinese food. There seems to be a, a bit of a discrepancy. So when are we gonna eat? Five, ten minutes. <laughs> but that's easier said than done, and while the trio waits for their table, they get into their typical brand of hijinks. Should I do it, George? For 50 bucks? I'll put my face in this soup and blow it! A quintessential episode about nothing for the show about nothing. Should we tell him we're leaving? Uh, what for? Let's just get out of here. Seinfeld, fall! Before we uncork our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. It's coming for me. Oh, it's coming for me. It's coming for me. Five of them. How can you be ambushed by five black holes? <laughs> it's always the way, isn't it? We've been in deep space for three million years and there hasn't been one. Then all of a sudden, five of them turn up. <laughs> one of the terrorists infiltrated CTU and deployed a canister of Syntox nerve gas through the ventilation system. That's why we needed to seal off as many rooms as possible. Uh, we may have a little problem here, folks. My head is bleeding, I'm sweating. My pulse feels like it's playing the minute waltz. Oh, look at him. And I thought I was in trouble. <laughs> What you may have here is you may have a seat at a public concussion. There are no credits on commercials. You got the Clio. It's your job. I give you money, you give me ideas. And you never say thank you. That's what the money is for. Exactly what kind of contaminant are we dealing with here? Number one, Fly, Breaking Bad. A fly. What do you mean? A fly, like, like, what do you mean? mean a fly a house fly Walt and Jesse's meth-making adventures were quickly gaining momentum in season 3 until this polarizing episode paused things in their tracks Our favorite meth cooking team is locked in their underground drug producing bunker chasing an errant fly we make poison for people who don't care All right we probably have the most unpicky customers in the world No 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 no, no rationalizing We'll find it any minute. Don't give up. Fueled by lack of sleep, stress, and sadness, the two both come to some realizations. Perfect moment. For what? To drop dead? What, are you saying you want to die? I'm saying I've lived too long. Budget constraints originally forced series creator Vince Gilligan to produce this episode. But Fly also serves as a contrast to the more tense and action-packed moments of the series, ensuring everything pops as it should. <sighs> Do you agree with our list? What's your favorite bottle episode? For more epic top 10s published every day, 
Be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Puppy Parade? I am in. I want to see if those wiener dogs are born that way or if they start off normal and then get wiener. Thank you.